What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Summer Career Mode. This is episode number 25. We start to do some stuff on the back of our 3-0 win over Fiorentina, edging ever closer to that Serie A title, which I absolutely bottled last year. I ain't gonna make the same mistake again. Learning from loss, learning from setback, you know I talk about that quite often. Yeah, I've uh, I've made that error. I am prepared to make it. So, uh, yeah, first game uh, of today's episode, uh, we're sitting on Barcelona here at the Stadio Giuseppe Sinigaglia, heading into the game, first leg of the Champions League last 16 tie uh, against Xavi side. Obviously, you know, this has been our first year in the Champions League. You know, I mention this a lot, like, when it comes down to realism in career mode, it's basically impossible to maintain for longer than about 6 to 12 months maximum, really. I mean, let's be honest here, we're in Season 4, Como shouldn't be in the Champions League in four years. When it comes down to playing for realism and, and, and playing this game with the realistic aspect, I think you have to be very, I guess, liberal with it. You have to be very kind of... I don't know, just kind of open to the, the possibilities, you know. I mean, was it realistic when Leicester won the Premier League in 2016 and subsequently the following year, Champions League quarter, was it quarterfinals they got to for being knocked out by Atletico Madrid? I mean, you know, was that realistic to conceive of just a couple of years before when they were in the championship? Well, obviously not really. But then again, it is an anomaly. You know, that's really the only kind of example we have that sort of thing happening at least in English football for as long as I can remember or for as long as I've been alive certainly so um, when it comes down to realism you, you do you do kind of have to be a little bit liberal with it and I often say when it comes down to the rate of progression uh, in a CM save as well I often say like one season is kind of like three years real life worth if that kind of makes sense like one one season of CM the progression you can make in one season is akin to I would say about three years of real life growth if you will because you can make such quick progression in such a quick amount of time I, I, I feel as though again like with all the crazy transfers happening as well if you kind of look at the career mode say that way one year being like three years this would be like season 12 if you will and this would be a lot more theoretically realistic for our como side being in the champions league not in season four but in like the 12th year uh since we've been here you know to now be into the Champions League last 16 during one with barcelona could that happen in four years with como being where they are right now well obviously not let's be totally honest here realistically that's not gonna happen but could you could could you possibly conceive it happening within 10 to 12 yeah, absolutely. I would say so if they were to make the right calls. I mean, we've seen certain clubs that have had great rises in the uh, in the past 12 years. We're talking, uh, you know, in more recent years as well, the rise of clubs such as uh, Bryson and Hove Albion, obviously Newcastle United is a little bit different because of the takeover. But even so, you know, clubs that, you know, not long ago were playing in the championship, with O'Brien, to be fair, a little bit longer. But, um, you know, now they are in European competitions. And for Newcastle's case, they're in the Champions League. So that's always the way I've seen it. When it comes down to realism, I really want to talk about that today because, like, I, I do try and keep my career modes somewhat semi-realistic and if I do call the career mode a realistic career mode which I often do like I often do like one sort of what you call main realistic career mode every single year the onus is on realism the onus is on keeping it as realistic as possible which is why when I get to a certain level with a club uh, I think it's some of the ones I've done recently, like Everton, for example, um, or maybe Southampton last year. When I get to a certain level with that club, I'll then move on to a bigger club because it wouldn't be realistic to then take them into the Champions League and to win Premier League titles and so on and so forth. It's highly unlikely those those things will happen um, in within decades for that club, let alone just three or four years. But when it does come down to like career modes like this, where I do try and keep it somewhat semi-realistic, but it's not the main goal of the CM, if you will, then I'll always say that I'll try and do some realistic transfers, realistic transfer targets, realistic sale destinations, and so on and so forth. But take it with a pinch of salt because of the rate of progression of player development and, again, the, the crazy AI transfers as well. I always say... keep. Keep in mind, one season kind of feels a bit like two to three seasons worth of real growth, if you will. So theoretically, even though it's four, season four for us right now, it feels as though we've done sort of like 10 to 12 years with this Como side, building it up. It's, I don't know if that makes sense, and hopefully it does. But anyway, um, yeah, we drew against Barcelona. Won the following game and then just about overcame Torino in the next one by two goals to one, edging ever closer to that Serie A title. Two months to go and right now leading the way, nine games to go, 
eight points clear of AC Milano, last year's champions. It's ours to lose from this point onwards. All we've got to do is win our home games and we will be champions. So following game on this homestand, Hellas Verona, eight minutes in, get ourselves a goal up here. You might notice in this year's FIFA, I've been, do I've been doing this a lot more than I used to. Rounding the goalkeeper. You know, I, I, I found it really difficult for several years rounding the goalkeeper, but now it's become a lot simpler for me. The timing doesn't need to be as inch perfect as it used to. You used to have to get it absolutely spot on, otherwise the goalkeeper would intercept quite comfortably. Now, not so much. You know, I feel like AI goalkeepers, they tend to go to ground really, really early uh, when you go through one on one. So it's become a lot easier for me to score goals that way here. But anyway, second headers for Rona. We surrendered our lead with two minutes to go. Like I said, just got to win our home games. We win our home games and we will be Serie A champions. Briel in Bolo. Man, what a sign this guy's been for me, honestly, man. Chasing the 40 club this season in the Serie A. What a pickup he has been from Torino. Bound to brace in this game, either side of the game, in a 2-1 victory there. And again, chasing the 40 clubs and continue to chase the Serie A ties as well. Big, big straight through victory there against Hellas Verona. Not been at my best in these past few games. I was, I was having one of those fever sessions where I wasn't I wasn't really playing great. I'll be totally honest. Like I, I say this a lot. Like Everyone's going to have fever sessions like this. We all do. Let's be honest here. We all do. We'll, we'll turn on the PlayStation, the Xbox, the, the, the PC or whatever. Play for a couple of hours and we're just not at it. Do you know what I mean? We're just not at it. This was definitely a session for me. I really wasn't at my best. I was scraping through with victories. I, uh, I managed to level against Barca in the first leg uh, at Como. But then heading into the second leg here, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I wasn't playing very well and I knew I was going to find it very difficult to get through this tie here. I was quite unlucky to be fair, trying to pass out from the back here after making a tackle, deflected straight back to Barca who converted from close range. There were six minutes to go in the first half, still down by a goal. Still in the tie at this point, but it was only a matter of time for Barca will double it and probably see out this game and the tie. And they would as well. Marcus Tramel floats, Fran Torres, the ex-man City man, drills home, bottom corner, right before the break, 2-0. And at this point here, I kind of just waved a white fly. I kind of threw in the towel at this point here. I knew it was highly unlikely I was going to get back from this. When when I'm playing really poorly, I, I'll always accept it. Like, I'll, I'll hold my hands up and I'll say it. When, I, when I've showed you, like, I've, I've, when I've said I've been dominated or you see a scoreline like 3-0, I'll show you. I don't sweep anything under the rug in my say. So I've played poorly. I won't sit there and be like, oh, yeah, I was just really unlucky here, you know. No, no, no I'll be honest about it. I got, I got bad in that game, man. I was really, really poor. Didn't play very well. And like I said, just one of those sessions where I just wasn't really on it, if I'm being totally honest. Like, every now and then, you can have a session like this. Sometimes you go into a session and you feel like you can play for like six hours and win every game. You feel as though you're that dominant. Sometimes you're just not really on it. This was one of those sessions here. So following game on the back of the 3-0 loss, knocked out of the Champions League. No shame you get knocked out of Barcelona, of course, being the last 16 there. Wanted to go a little bit further in our debut year. Maybe to cause all the semis, but sadly, first knockout round there to Barca. So with that being the case, how to bounce back following game into Milano at the San Siro. Right now, eight points clear of the champions AC Milan. I knew if we'd win this this game with just a few remaining it's our title basically in the bag so yeah into away from home got a little bit lucky at 18 minutes in that almost kind of summed up the way I was playing really <laughs> I survived with the ball hitting the crossbar and I almost just smashed the ball against one of my teammates into the back and that would have been an embarrassing level to concede thankfully a little little bail out there if you will because it deflected straight back toward Dara Hit the post myself, 58 minutes in there. Um, obviously, free kicks, as you know, probably one of my weakest areas of the game. I score about one per series I do for YouTube. That was almost it. <laughs> that was almost it, hitting the crossbar there. Unlucky. Almost making it 2-0. Man, I am so bad at free kicks. I don't know if I'll ever get really good at free kicks again. Believe it or not, for new viewers to my channel, I used to be lights out from free kicks. Go back to, like, FIFA 11, FIFA 12... Anyone that was watching me back then, and wow, like I say, as, as I always say to my long-term subs, thank you for being with me for this amount of time. But you, you'll be able to tell the newer viewers, you can you can confirm this for me, you can back me up here. I used to be lights out from free, kick, uh, free kicks during that time. Not nowadays. The game mechanics have changed so much, and now the new free kick system, I'm just not very good at it. I got a little bit better over the course of this year. At the start of the year, I was shocking. I have scored a, a couple since the turn of the, uh, the calendar year, which, as I'm saying that, I realise how embarrassing that is to say. But even so, I hit the bar there, uh, Danny Olmo leveled it, and uh, in the end, it was a draw and a slip up. Thankfully, it didn't seem to matter because Milano lost their following game, which meant that we were now nine points clear of eight games to go. So, heading into the following game here, the first one of April, eight games 
remaining. Milan, nine points clear of the champions. If we would beat them, we would then go 12 clear. It was a shocking game. <laughs> it was really, really poor. My third straight game without a win. Goal is drawn out. It was really, really poor game. So often, man, like the games that you're really looking forward to play when you turn on the, uh, again, you turn on your console, you're really looking forward to playing those games. Those are the big ones. They're just real letdowns. That definitely was. Terrible game. Nothing happened. Goal is drawn. But I didn't mind too much because you know, we kept Milan nine points behind us with seven games to go. So Destiny still in our own hands. Win seven out of our remaining nine. We would be Serie A champions. Bonne back and no wins in our last three games. I needed to respond here against Bologna. Right before halftime, so unlucky here. Gazaniga, sexy Gazaniga for my long-term viewers, made an amazing save there. And the clearance off the line, I was thinking, my God, it's just not been my night. I was playing this last night, I was like, it's just not been my night, man. Nothing is going my way. We're still tied at 0-0. Just can't seem to get the luck in this one here. But I stayed positive, I stayed aggressive, I felt as though I'd finally break the deadlock at some point. If I kept on being positive with 12 and a half minutes to go, I would indeed get the break, which I think I did deserve in the end on the balance of play. Yep, Simon Profundi in from Udinese, finds a bit of space inside the area and drills it in top bins. Finally, Gaza is beaten and finally Coma after no wins in their last three. And back to that draws in the Serie A, do get back to winning ways. Wasn't my best in this FIFA session, guys. I'll be totally honest here. Didn't play very good football. Didn't play very good FIFA. But you know what? Most important thing, we did come through and bounce back with the victory. So that means now with seven games to go, you see the league table here. Milano still in second place. Still nine points behind. But edging closer to that title. Five wins in our last... Sorry, four wins in our last six games now. And we will be Serie A champions. It's in the bag. Just got to make sure I don't fumble it like last year. But that will end this episode of the Summer Crew, guys. So Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you had them, please do drop a like. So you'll have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Summer Career. And hopefully play some better FIFA very soon.